Good morning, today I'm going to show you my favourite ever WordPress design hack so you'll be able to create layouts like this, and this, and this. This design hack is going to let you create these really cool overlapping block effects really simply and really quickly. And what's great about it is once you understand how to do it, which won't take long at all, you can create any number of different designs. First, to help you understand how this actually works, a tiny weeny weeny bit of theory. So the key to understanding how to do this hack is pretty straightforward, but what we've got is we have a container block. Excuse my bad drawing here. This is your container block. Now, the container block could be a group block, or it could be a cover block. Any kind of container block will do this, or even a columns block, actually, but we need a container block. I'll show you how to do this in a second. And what we're gonna do on that container block is we're gonna give it a graduated background, which means that if we gave it a full background, the whole of this area would be covered in that color. But actually, we're just going to say we want half of this container block to be a different color. Now, we can choose any colors we like, which I'll show in a second. Now, here's the trick. What you do then is you get another block or blocks, and this can be any blocks, and you place those blocks halfway or whatever proportions you like within that original container block. So this could be a um, video block, for example, within here, or it could be an image block. And that means when that's displayed, it'll look like it's overlapping. But actually all we're doing here is we're creating a gradient background with some blocks that are cutting or dissecting or bisecting that gradient background. Let's get into how you do it. Right, let's build out this page. I've kept my picture over on the right for reference. So I'm gonna start by adding a group block. So I'm gonna type forward slash group uh, just to add the group block and then hit return and that'll add the group block into the page. The group block essentially is a container block. So let's click on the list view and we can see all we've got in this page at the moment is a group block. But we're gonna add a gradient background. So we're gonna come over here to the block settings, click on background just over here. And this is where we can set the background. It'll be set by default as a solid background, but we want this option here, gradient. Click on that and then this little color picker thing comes up here. It's slightly confusing to be honest, but we've basically got two color points by default. So I'm gonna start with this one on the left, which is gonna be the top one. I'm gonna make that black. You'll see we've got this kind of purple one over here. I'm gonna make this one over on the right here white, because I just want a black and white effect at the moment. Now down here at the angle, you'll see, you can see this little pointer here, which is telling us the angle, which is the wrong angle. We basically want it vertically downwards, which the angle is gonna be 180 there. So, so just pop that in there, I'm not sure I've done that right. Yep, so 180 down there. And it's still not right. Now this is where it gets uh, cool. What we have to do is move both these points here because we don't, I don't really want a sort of gradient, back, gradient background. I want a very firm background where we go black and then we go white. It's up to you, but this is the way I'm doing it today. So you just move each of these points so they basically meet right in the middle. And you'll see, you kind of can see what's happening up here. It won't look like we want at the moment because our group block is tiny at the moment. The group block will just flex to fit whatever content is within it. And the way to think about this gradient picker down here is if you wanted 50-50 of your container block to be 50% white, 50% black, then you would align this 50-50 down here. Conversely, if you wanted 25% black at the top and then 75% white at the bottom, you would basically start the black, finish the black around here. So that's the way to think about this. Right, next up we need to actually add some more blocks within this. Now the trick here, the kind of secret source, is to add another group block within your existing group block. We do that because when we add another group block within the first group block, we can actually determine how wide that group is gonna be. Let me show you. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign just here. You might need to hover over it to see it. I'm gonna search for a group again. I'm gonna add another group block. So now we've got two group blocks. The top level group block up here, which we've added a gradient background to, and another group block within that one. But now we can add any block we'd like within that other group block. Let me show you. So I'm gonna add the cover block within that, like so. And I'm gonna choose a photograph to be the background of my cover block. There we go. There's my photograph. Uh, it's not looking quite how we want at the moment, but let me show you this. So within this group block, and I actually can actually go in here and I can change the width of that group block or that container block, which will inherit that. So we can change the size of the inner blocks. Now all we have to do is add a bit of space. I'm gonna change that back. Now all we have to do is add a little bit of space above this so we actually can see that it's actually kind of overlapping properly. So within this group block, I'm gonna go insert after, and I'm gonna drag the paragraph block within that group block. 
And now we can just add a spacer block or any kind of block within that and we can actually start to play around with the overlapping features that we want. If we wanted this gradient to come further down here, then we just click on the top group block, come back to background, and we would just mess around with these color pickers. You see how that's now taking up more of the overall container, because remember the overall container block is taking up this entire space. And because it's a cover block, we can also add a video into it, like in this example here. Here's a couple more ideas for you to try. You can see over on the right what we're going to try and achieve. I'm calling this the push right overlap. We're going to start in, in exactly the same way. I'm going to add the group block into this page, and then I'm going to set the background gradient of that. Click on background, then go to gradient down here, and we're going to work in exactly the same way. I'm going to choose exactly the same colors just for speed today. I'm going to go black to white. Oh, I've lost my picker, go back to background. And then I'm going to move these color points here. So we've got this very sharp distinction and I'm going to finish off by changing the angle. You can play around with the angle to get some really interesting effects. So that's the first cover block, sorry, the first container block done. Then within that, I'm going to add another group block just like we did before. And we do that primarily because it gives us control over certain things like the width and the radius of those inner blocks. Now within this group block, we're actually going to add a spacer block to start with. That's going to push it down a little bit. Now after here, this is where it gets fun. We're going to actually add a columns block. So forward slash columns. And you can choose the proportions. I'm going to go 50-50 today. And that just sets the columns. Now we're trying to replicate this layout over on the right here. So on the right hand column, I'm going to add the image block. I should have that image already uploaded. There we go. The other thing I can do with the image block, of course, I can change the radius so you get this nice curved effect on that photograph. And then on over on the left here, I'm just going to add the paragraph block. I should have some dummy text in there. And I'm going to change those colors to white so we can actually read it. Of course, I could put other blocks within that columns if I wanted to. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the top level group block and I'm going to set that to be full width. And here's the final layout idea for you over on the right here. We've got three boxes overlapping plus some text above. Let's build that out. So we're going to start by hitting forward slash group. Then we're going to set the background gradient of that group block exactly the same way that we did before. We're going to set the first color as black, the second color as white. And then we're going to move these color points towards each other so they overlap each other. Then we're going to change the angle. I'm sticking to 180. And then we're going to add a group block within that block, just like so. And again, that lets us basically have more control over that. Let's click on the list view so we can see what we've got. Now we're going to add the spacer block within the second group block. Then we're going to hit return and add a columns block to start with. But we're just going to add some text within each of these. Now remember, the gradient has to fill the whole container block. That's why this is going to work in the end. Then we're going to come down on the columns block and we're going to go insert after. And we're going to add another columns block after this. And in this case, we're going to add three columns. And then within each of these columns, we're actually going to add a cover block, like so. If I could type, let's go cover. And then we're going to choose a photo. What I'll do for speed today, I'm just going to actually duplicate each column block. Let me remove each of these. I'm going to click on this and duplicate this one. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. This is a really quick way of working if you're ever working within columns. I'm going to change the text color of these paragraph blocks up here to white. And I'm going to set the top level group block to be full width. And here's the finished result. Let's look at the list view so we can see again the hierarchy of how this works. Click on the three dots up here. Here's the list view. So we've got the top level group block. Within that, we've got a secondary group block. We do that primarily because we can then determine the width of that group block. A few other cool things as well, actually. Then we have our spacer block, just to give us a gap between the first group block and the inner group block. Then we've got our first columns block, which just contains our text. Then we have our second columns block with three columns. In each column, we actually have a cover block with a paragraph block within each one where we have the name. So there's three possible layouts that you can create very simply with that really great technique and hack. I hope you found that one useful. If you did, if you can hit the like button now, it'd be amazing because it really, really, really helps spread the word of the channel. And also every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. <laughs>